This has the makings for a very interesting show. Uh, I could not find my red and white Nash Polish national jersey. That's a bad omen. I'm wearing green, uh, which is the color the, the Mexico team is wearing, who Poland is facing. So things are getting interesting here at Up and Adams. And I'm supposed to carry on a football conversation for the next hour uh, while Poland is facing Mexico, as I'm looking at in my studio right now, as they get things going in Qatar. Very excited about this. And very excited about FanDuel Sportsbook being so cool and letting me partake in a little parlay fun. Take a look at what I got going here. Uh, too late to place bets, but we are saying that Lev Lewandowski, who has never scored a goal for Poland. Why? Because he's tripled all the time. And he is, there's no creativity in this offense, and there's no rhythm, and that's just the way it is. And he's the only show in town. Uh, and by the way, Mexico is really, really good. But I think he is going to score. I'm willing it to happen. They spelled his name wrong on that graphic. But that's OK. That's probably also a bad omen. But here we go. Uh, and I think France, even without Benzema, with Mbappe, who I do think is the best player in the world right now. Uh, they pull it out and they get a win. So if you got in on that action, we are cheering as we go. I mean, I'm literally wearing Mexico. My dad's going to not let me in the house. This is going to be a bad situation. Uh, but that's the parley. And now this is our, this is, our show has not even started. Okay, now let's start the show. Uh, Conrad, can we put up that graphic again? You want to make it? Want to make it, make a wager? All right, let's see it. Unless they fix it, I did text them to fix it, but let's take a look. Um, go ahead. Now, how much did you want to bet? A million dollars? That that's spelled right? Okay, two million and a couple of forks. Are you telling me that that's? You're telling this Polish girl that that's how you spell Lewandowski? Where's the ski? S K I. Conrad, you are an idiot. Uh, the whole control room's laughing. Uh, this prompter's not on or working. Anyone? No? This one right here in front of me that I'm looking at? Hey, hello. We're going to talk football, and that's what we do here on the program. The Niners, uh, they had a game. That's another bad omen for me in Poland because the game was so awesome at Estadio Azteca. All that elevation, 7,000-something feet going uh, as the Mexico City crowd showed out really for the Niners. That, they had that crowd feeling some kind of way, um, and they obliterated those Niners with an asterisk, banged up. Arizona crowd. Uh, so uh, let's go to this shot here. That's what I would like to do. Is that possible, Derek, our intrepid director? Awesome. And here we go. Oh, I can show off my new shoes, everybody. Uh, the score of the game was 38 to 10. Uh, by the way, we do have Mark Ingram coming on the show to do some red cards and yellow cards. Um, I like to call these kind of wins, the ones that I saw San Francisco pulled out, they're like the flirting with the Super Bowl bound button wins. They get me excited and they get me wanting to say something a little crazy because it was a complete team effort from Kyle Shanahan's squad. And this win vaults San Francisco ahead of Seattle people. They are now in control of the NFC West and they have the number three seed in the NFC overall. So the Cardinals, of course, you're going to have the asterisks of the no Kyler Murray. There's a few other pieces missing. But that button that I want to press for this Niners team going all the way is looking really pretty. And it's because Jimmy G looked as sharp as ever. Four touchdown passes for the first time since the Niners made that run and took the NFC Championship back in 2019, okay, uh, to the NFC Championship. And Jimmy G had this offense looking absolutely unstoppable. How many times does he leave in the field going, let's go, let's go, all the time? He is a winner. And for the first time since the McCaffrey trade, we saw all of these offensive pieces working in concert. Literally, everyone went off. Look, at this is insane. McCaffrey, over 100 yards on 14 touches. Debo had 94 and punched in the dagger to put the game out of reach. Kittle went for 84 and two touchdowns. And former first-rounder Brandon Ayuk added two touchdowns as well, guys. That's just the offense. This defense has been number one forever. They've been dominant the entire year. But it's not about the defense. It kind of is, but I've given them their love and their flowers. Uh, and hopefully Stats is too as he joins us here in a minute. But it's about Jimmy. If Jimmy can continue to play like this and Shanahan can use all the weapons as masterfully as he did just last night, I genuinely think they're the best team in the NFC. I'm sorry to the Eagles. I'm sorry to everyone. I'm sorry to Poland for not wearing their colors this morning. I 
if, if, if they can keep this kind of consistency on offense, it is theirs to lose. And with that, we bring in my guy, a very good friend of mine. Let's go back over here to welcome in SB Nation and Niners Nation podcast host Rob Seth Guerrero. Ooh, What's ooh, up? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, remember like the Vuvuzelas? Why don't we need to bring those back? Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What color am I wearing right now? Red and white, because you're a better man than I. We are living <laughs> I'm just in, saying. We're living in Bizarro World. I couldn't find my, I, I could find, I found a Bayern Munich one, two of them, and I didn't want to wear those because you can't see his name. So it's like, why are you wearing a Bayern Munich? He doesn't even play there anymore. Um, it's too inside. But I'm watching the game, so I'm, but I'm trying to pay attention to you because we, we, listen, you are critical when you need to be. You keep it real. Am I getting ahead of myself here thinking that this team is going to win the NFC? It sure looks like it right now. They put it all together last night, just like you said. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go to the offense that scored on five straight possessions? <laughs> do you want to go on the, to the defense that hasn't allowed a point in the second half for three straight games? Everybody got into the fun last night, and that's what the 49ers can look like when they put it together together. And you mentioned Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, don't focus on the four touchdowns. Okay. Obviously, that's great. Focus on the zero interceptions. First time in Jimmy's career, he's gone three straight games without an interception. If he does that, they're going to be very hard to beat. Do you think, listen, don't jump on the bandwagon now. What do you mean <laughs> jump on the bandwagon? The last time we talked, the 49ers had just gotten boat raced by the Chiefs. They had a losing record. There was nothing to be happy about the last we time we talked. We don't want you, Rob. You stay yelling at your cloud. <laughs> we, 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 we don't want. I told, I, we were in our 5 a.m. meeting, and I go, I'm just going to tell Rob that he can't be on the bandwagon. He's not invited with the Niners. So, no, uh, you're keeping it real. The no interceptions is definitely, I mean, he set the NFL Mexico record, so it's cool to see the four touchdowns. It's cool to see Shanahan. I've been waiting for weeks for, to pop the popcorn for what it's going to look like with both Debo and McCaffrey out there, and they do it. Do, do you do you feel confident, though? Was it a turning point, do you think, for Jimmy G? I think what Christian McCaffrey has allowed Garoppolo to do is when things go, don't go according to plan, the pocket gets a little muddy, Jimmy just checks it off to Christian McCaffrey, and he's so good, he'll break a couple tackles and keep them gaining positive yards. I think Christian McCaffrey has lowered Jimmy Garoppolo's turnover-worthy plays, and that is huge because Kyle's going to get them down the field. He's good enough as a, as a coach and a coordinator to get them down the field. If Jimmy doesn't put the ball in harm's way, it's almost harder for them not to score. Yeah. Now, we haven't talked to you and I since the – it's a great point um, – since the trade deadline, I think-ish. So I want to get your opinion on this because some Niners fans were getting in their feelings looking at what the Dolphins were able to turn that Trey Lance trade into essentially so Miami able to turn the number three pick that the Niners used on Lance into Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Bradley Chubb. That's pretty good. Are these fans justified in being upset stats or are they just not seeing a bigger picture here? Well, it's easy to be frustrated, right? Because the Dolphins, they've got all those players. They're seeing the return on the investment, right? Where the 49ers have Trey Lance, and he hasn't even played 15 quarters in two years. So it's really hard to be this patient for this long, especially when the Niners' offense up until these last three games was really kind of stagnant. They only scored 22 points per game, which was 16th right in the middle of the NFL. So you got no benefit from Trey Lance. The offense was struggling. Meanwhile, Miami's bringing in everybody, and they're kicking everybody's rear end because their offense looks unbelievable. So it's hard for the 49er fan to stay patient, right. and I understand it, but you just – Take a step back. Things are good right now in San Francisco. Forget about what Miami's doing. Let's be happy with what we're doing. Wow, who's this guy? Anybody, anybody doing something? Where's, where's my friend Staff? Anybody? Who, uh, <laughs> what, on. what's, what's going on? Oh, come on. We are, listen, we have the footage. We're going to splice it together for the next time you join me. I, mean, I actually love that you're enjoying the moment. I got to tell you, what, what? so many fans don't. You know, see this, you know, this team? Want well, to know how I fell in love with them? Seriously? Because, not because, usually it's because nobody's talking about a team and I see a little something in them or at least the potential. But the, this fan base all last year enjoyed the moment. And it's not because it was like, I can't believe it's happening to us because they had all the talent, they had all that. But they really maintained week to week a happy with our team. And, and that's something that I think as an NFL fan, and you, you handle that role really well, really hard to do. 
Oh, thank you. I think you have to be happy when the team plays well. If you can't enjoy some of the journey, then yeah. what is the point of this whole thing? What are we investing so much time and energy in when the team is bad? It's okay to say they played bad, but when they're good, just be happy about it. This is one of the best days to be a fan of an NFL team. When your team plays really well on prime time, you could just sit back the next day, go to shows like this, all yeah. the national shows, and just enjoy the praise. It's so true, and it's something that I would tell, you know, I've had a very interesting discourse with Titans fans. Sorry to go a little, you know, left and right here. But, you know, they're always a team that's like, nobody's talking about this. us. When Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown out there last year are smoking everybody, and they're the one seed, and, you know, and they're they, – but they thrive on that, and this year it's completely changed because they're sitting pretty, they're looking good. The offense isn't fun to look at, but they're still winning. And I go, what's the difference here? Like, what's going on that I'm not getting that, that like, grief from them for not talking to them and you're not seeing it on a national level and they said well a we were humbled last year but b it's more about just like shutting up enjoying the nice moments as they come and not picking apart everything that's going wrong or how much we're not being talked about and it seemed very banglesy to me and it seems like what you're doing and what you're preaching to the uh fans of the niners to do which i love now now jimmy you're as critical about him as anyone so i ask you is there any scenario in which you can see him remaining the niners quarterback beyond this season uh, if they go all the way, if they don't go all the way, or, you know, is, is, do you think the reins get handed back to Lance next year regardless? I think the second Trey Lance got hurt, everything is on the table. I think the 49ers quarterback situation is going to be one of the most interesting storylines going forward in the entire league because literally anything can happen. Jimmy Garoppolo may come back. Jimmy Garoppolo may say, you know what? Thanks for everything. I'm out. The Niners may pursue Tom Brady. Hell, they may pursue Aaron Rodgers. Anything is on the table for the 49ers quarterback situation. I think it depends on how they finish this year. It depends on Trey Lance's rehab and how he looks. And it was nice to see him walking around Mexico City yesterday. Nothing is settled with the Niners quarterback situation. It's going to be one of the biggest storylines oh going God. forward for the next several months. Um, about Mexico is about to score, I think. Hold on. Just give me one. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, you're talking about how it goes. Oh, man, he almost had. Whoo. Deep breaths. Safe. Um. So you mentioned the Niners and how it finishes this year being telling and everything's on the table. Let's take a look at this little, cute little homestand they have coming up. I want to get your thoughts on it. They have the Saints, who just took care of business. Say what you want. Then they have Mike McDaniel. And, you know, he makes his return. This has to be one of the most anticipated matchups of the season against the Dolphins. And then Tom Brady makes his homecoming to the Bay. So how do you see this stretch playing out? Everybody's going to focus on that game against Miami because it's Mike McDaniel, yes. the student going against the teacher in Shanahan. That's the least important game for the 49ers. That's the AFC game. If they lose that game, okay, you can live with that. You want them to beat New Orleans. You certainly want them to beat Seattle and Tampa Bay. And that sneaky Washington game that's in there too is now looking like it's going to be more and more important for the 49ers. So if I had to pick one game for them to lose in that stretch, it would actually be that Miami game even though everyone's going to make a big fuss about Mike McDaniel. Win the games in your conference. Those are what it comes down to with playoff seating and division seating and all of that stuff. So that's what the 49ers need to do. And I love, Kay, they don't leave the Pacific time zone for the rest of it's the regular a, season. It's such a good point, and it's such a huge advantage. Uh, and it, it's a great call by you. Really quick, before we let you go, it, you know, it's you and Jimmy Garoppolo sitting in, you know, couples counseling. <laughs> And, and the question, the prompt, I imagine, is something like, just like, tell me how you're feeling right now. Can you use as many descriptive words to describe your relationship with your starting quarterback? Um, a cautious optimism. It's healing. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, historically in his career, has played well against the Arizona Cardinals. Jimmy has four games with four touchdowns in his career. Three of those four games have come against the Arizona Cardinals, but it has to be sweet for him. Cardinals defensive coordinator Vance Joseph told the ESPN broadcast crew that they wanted to force Jimmy Garoppolo to be the reason that the 49ers mm. won the game last night. And Jimmy delivered. And, and if he can keep doing that, then this team can go as far as it wants to go. Debo, Christian McCaffrey, the mind of the guy who wears the flat build hats, and Kyle Shanahan looking pretty good there. Jimmy Garoppolo would be the only question, and health, of course, uh, in the NFC there. But if they can keep it all together, woof to the rest of the NFC and to the Bills and everybody that are looking a little bit uh, 
less confident. I have less, I have less confidence in a lot of the teams that, you know, even the Eagles over the past couple of weeks, they've got something to prove to me. The Bills over in the AFC have something to prove for me to me in their division and so on. So uh, it's it's these little, I mean, if people, people who are over at FanDuel Sportsbook stats, like that's what they look at, these little things that might lean them one way or the other when you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, a, a game of inches and a bigger respect than it even is. It's something like not having to leave your time zone is a huge deal in the thick of the race. Absolutely. And the Niners really only have two road games left. They got to go to Vegas and they got to go to Seattle. Other than that, it's all at Levi's now. Yeah. And they don't have to go to Qatar or Qatar, whichever one you want to call it. All right. Thank you so much. Stats, we love you. Thank you for giving Jimmy Garoppolo flowers. Uh, you are healing your relationship and we appreciate that. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, great stuff from him, as always. Mark Ingram on the way with a yellow red card, yellow card situation. It kind of all leads up to this. It all leads up to the World Cup with Mark Ingram, but it's one of our favorite segments of the week and we also have the twitterverse coming up uh we're gonna do some world cup comparisons is aaron Rodgers ronaldo that's too easy right and and who is my poor sweet poland are they doing anything did the goalie get hurt what did i miss who got hurt who was hurt yeah what happened all right over the weekend kareem benzema on the defending world cup winning french national team was ruled out of the entire tournament he had a thigh injury it was really sad and one of my dear followers said hey uh I need help with this in NFL terms. What is it? So I went to my dad and I asked and I said, I got you. I said, this would be like if the Chiefs, hello, losing Kelsey, lost Kelsey, and they still had Tyreek Hill, uh, who, I mean, Tyreek Hill's kind of the Mbappe of it all. So it's all true and I got lots of love for that. So here we go with some more uh, NFL World Cup comps. I'm sitting there at Manhattan Beach with my father bothering him as he's trying to enjoy a sunset like but dad but like what really is messy and like is Ronaldo more like Aaron Rodgers or is Ronaldo more like and he's just like leave me alone but Hamilton you're having quite a day here and you're a bit mad about my stats interview yeah I mean he drops an absolute bombshell that he <laughs> thinks the Niners are going to pursue Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers and you're you completely ignored him and are talking about Poland and Mexico. So, oh, Mexico almost scored. No acknowledgement of I, the Niners pursuing Rodgers and Brady. I kind of didn't hear him. I'm not as good at my job as I thought that I was. And then there's like, the, this isn't working, that's not working. Everyone's running around the studio. Everyone's running amok. Uh, I didn't hear that, but what do you... He, the, the Brady, it's back to, his, back to San Mateo. It's all very cute. And then you bring Edelman from San Mateo and they all... I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. The Aaron Rodgers thing... You think Shanahan is going to go for – no, it's not how I don't, I don't believe in any of this, but I like that it's all on the table. It's quite dramatic. Yeah, and I like that I wore my green for Team Mexico today <laughs> after all this. So. You're such a jerk. It's all working jerk. out. Okay, let's do it. Let's do some of these, uh, these comparisons. We have some great tweets. Thanks, everybody, for tweeting in and up at Adam Show. They were awesome. All right, so um, we're going to start it off. You've been talking a lot about Lewandowski for, the, yes. for this parlay. Who is the Robert Lewandowski of the NFL world? Okay, I'm going to say, and I've done a lot of thoughts about this, because he is Robert Lewandowski, who I need to score for my parlay. It's very, like, messy. You saw Messi this morning. Like, great players, prolific players, great supporting cast that put them and orchestrate everything so they're the star and they score goals. That's just what it is. So, but, but when it comes to playing for their national team, you got to bring everybody up. You're the only focal point. It's not built that way. And, the, and it never works out. And that's kind of what Lewandowski is. So he's among the best, arguably the best at his position. He was a Bayern guy. He left to find happiness in Barcelona. He scores hella goals. He was robbed of the Ballon d'Or, in my opinion. In the NFL, to me, he is Devontae Adams. And Poland are the Raiders. Devontae, yeah. Devontae is elite, top tier. But he's kind of the only show in town for his squad. Everyone heard, everyone experienced on the Raiders, and Devontae is the guy. Uh, okay, I don't love this. What's happening? Okay, here it is. Look, look at these two. Yeah, lots of similarities here. So, uh, well, here's the crazy stat that you and I found. Oh, as my mic back just falls. This is just a complete show today. Um, speaking of show, he's the only show in town, and he's the only show in time. And this one, we found a crazy number. Over the last three games, he's averaging over 15 targets a game. 
What a vacuum. That's unbelievable. 138 <laughs> yards per game. Let's stop it with all the movement is driving me crazy. And he's this guy right here, Devonta Adams, has scored five touchdowns, okay? That's Lewandowski on Poland. So we're watching the game here, uh, and he's the sole draw of defenders. It's pretty much all him. There's no one else to take the pressure off. This is a tough group, by the way. You saw what Saudi Arabia did this morning. Chester called it. You have the Messi, uh, who's the Messi, who's the Mahomes of the whole thing, and Mexico, which is happening right now. So this is the AFC West of groups. It is tough sledding. Neither, by the way, have won a, uh, a world title or championship for their squad on the world's biggest stage. So it is all on them, Hammer. What's the confidence level that Lewandowski actually gets that goal today for you? I'm in the car with my dad, and I go, Dad, what are the chances? I'm going to do this parlay. Oh, see, so he's doing this. He's like, I don't yeah. Uh, he's never done it, and Mexico's really good. And they're good defensively. And so I I don't think it happens, but I've never done well on a parlay. So part of me thinks that it'll happen because I don't I'm not confident in it at all. So I'm trying something new. Yeah, you're due. You're definitely due. Um and <laughs> God, am I due. <laughs> we'll keep it moving here. Um, how about the bills? Even my cup is Mexico <laughs> colors. Wow. There what you go. is happening? Reverse the whole world's against you. Yeah, as usual. Um, yeah, you, it could be like a reverse jinx in, in some way, though. But really um, quick, really you quick. Know, you brought a lot of bad luck to the team, be so maybe we, having their colors. Yeah, before we move on, though, the Devonta Adams thing is wild. Oh, yeah. No, the way that he's playing right now, and it's kind of gotten lost because the Raiders are so far out of it, but uh, he's just taking the team on his back right now. I mean, that game-winning touchdown in overtime against the Broncos, he just he willed that team to a win, and it's pretty awesome to see. Yeah, what else we got? Uh, all right, how about the Bills? A, t a team with a lot of talent. They're kind of a trendy pick to go all the way, even though they haven't done it yet. Who would be the Bills comp in the World Cup world? I'm going to say, and I, I played with Belgium for a long time because, I, you know, my dad, he goes, watch out for the Belgium, that'll be good, so <laughs> there's that. But I think ultimately we came to the, to the Netherlands as the team because they are a loaded squad, and there's, you know, always – a super strong performance, but they always come up short at the end. It's like the Bills when it comes to making and winning a Super Bowl. Uh, so there's a lot of comparisons to be made there uh, as we look at some of this. But, you know, they, they've got a lot of top five love. Netherlands and everybody's top five. The Bills, they're obviously the favorite um, to win, win it all. So there's, you know, kind of all of that going on. Um, ultimately, you know, I'm looking at some of the numbers. The Netherlands are great comparisons. They made it to the finals and lost to Spain in 2010. Third Third place in Brazil, their second place team. That's what they are. They've been to the finals three times, and it's never worked out, Hammy. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Bills fans are going to find a way to make this comparison a slight against them. So that'll be fun uh, for I you on say. Twitter. That'll what? be great. I think that they, um, I think that they feel. <laughs> but you know what? I thought about that, and I go, if I compare them to Belgium, they'll be more mad for some reason than the Netherlands. That's true, because you point to the Netherlands, you're right, they've had a lot of success, yeah. they've had a lot of winning teams, yeah. they've, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it's a, I think it's a great comparison, I love that one, that's, that's my, my favorite Viva Mexico, so all right, I gotta switch home sitting, I hate <laughs> this shot, I hate everything right now, go ahead. All right, you know, I have to bring this guy up. Tell me. Who is the Aaron Rodgers of this World Cup? It's, you know, and I, I hate doing like the trite, Low hanging fruit, even though that's exactly what this segment is. So I want to do something a little different, but I can't because it is Ronaldo. It just is. Get over it, people. Ronaldo, both, it's just too, it's too much sense. There's some differences, but listen, they're both all-time greats, prolific, both in the best ever convo. But here we are, people, at the back nine, and it's, you know, not how anyone wants to see it go down. There's drama on both sides. And, you know, you look at the, the, the wins. Ronaldo's won a lot. Ronaldo has 32 trophies in his career. Five Ballon d'Ors in his career. That's the same thing as an MVP, kind of. You know, Rodgers has four. He had two in a row. Now, Ronaldo's never won a World Cup, right? Their best finish with fourth play, with, was fourth place. He did win a UEFA championship, though, uh, Look at those two. And that was back in 2016. They beat France. And that kind of equals out, right? That's like their one Super Bowl apiece. They have that in common. But there's so much to prove. Like These two should have so many wins for their respective national teams or the teams that they sort of like, you know, uh, were drafted to. That would be what Aaron Rodgers makes of Green Bay. So Ronaldo, you know, he's like a, he's got a Ph.D. in histrionics. 
He's off the bench for Manu right now. He's leaving the pitch. He's mad. He wants to play. He can't. He doesn't have it anymore. And it's not going so hot for Aaron either. You know, those Packers are sitting there at four and seven. They've got the Eagles in Philly this week. It's probably a wrap, honestly, for this Packers squad. Uh, the difference there, I do think, like, I think he's cooked, Ronaldo. He's, you know, physically doesn't have it anymore. Prolific, amazing career. People are saying Aaron doesn't have it. You take away, you give him a, a bit of a better, more experienced supporting cast that's come into their own. You get rid of that thumb injury. I don't think Aaron's lost a beat. I really don't. I agree, and, and you brought it up, too. I think the thumb injury is... Uh, is bothering him yeah. a little bit more than he's letting on. And that's one thing he hasn't made an excuse about, but I, I think you see it sometimes it's, it, it, he seems to really be uh, favoring it. It seems to be, it seems to be affecting him. Uh, but I'm a little surprised you didn't go messy here. I feel like losing to Saudi Arabia in the first game <laughs> is kind of like losing to the Niners at Lambeau field in the snow yeah. as a one seed. But Messi is like a. <laughs> you're trying to get me to say something bad about Aaron Rodgers, and I'm gonna I'm take. Not. I'm gonna take the bait. Uh, the uh, the antics are the difference. I think Messi is okay. a very, you know, undersized, more humble sort of player than Aaron Rodgers, and the the drama doesn't surround him and follow him like it does a Ronaldo and a Rodgers. Fine, I said it. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. So Messi's like a Darren Sproles, I guess we'll say. No, but um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, sure, yeah. All right. Go ahead. All right, last one. I was watching Team USA yesterday. Very frustrating game, but it, it, it's a fun team to watch. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of new players, yeah. a lot of names that we, we might not be used to yeah. on, the, on this Team USA this year. So who would be the NFL comp to, to Team USA? I'm curious to see what Mark Ingram has to say about this. I know he's standing by ready to come on. We got these cards here, and he was watching the game. He tweeted about it. But I'm like, you think about USA, and USA is young, very young. They're inexperienced. They're counted out. They're all heart. To me, USA is... Mike McDaniel, okay? New head coach, shiny, youthful. I mean, USA is full of guys under the age of 26. They have their unassuming leader in Pulis Pulisic. Um, you know, this is a guy who doesn't take shine. Instead, he sets up his teammates to crush it. We saw it yesterday against Wales Hamilton, the goal assist of Pulisic, of Timothy, Timothy Way. I mean, that is two at a Tyreek Hill if I've ever seen it out there. So I feel also strongly that Ted Lasso would root for and write billboards for Mike McDaniel of all coaches. So the USA is, in fact, Mike McD. I mean, I love this choice. He's one of my favorite personalities yes. in the NFL right now. And and I also, I, I like the comparison because he kind of came out of nowhere for a lot of people this past year. And I feel like with this Team USA, yeah. it's it's similar. Like, we, we, you don't really have as many of the household names that we grew up with, um, like an Alexi Lawless, that type of a guy uh, on this team. So I, I like it. I like it. Do we have any, t we have some really good tweets. I know you went through and picked out some of your faves. What do we got? All right, let's hit the first one. Go Brazil or the Cowboys, storied franchise that that hasn't won in 20 plus years with some embarrassing playoff and knockout losses since. A good mix of young talent and veterans and a favorite to win it all this year. I can't argue. They better win it all, especially with Tony Pollard doing what he's doing. Let's just run through the tweets. We'll talk under them. We don't have to come on cam. Let's bang them out and go. All right, here's the next one. The Bears are England. Fans travel really well. Yep. They act like their team invented the sport, and they keep talking about that one win many decades ago, but they haven't been relevant for way too long. That's kind of that's kind of harsh. It's kind of harsh. There were a lot of comparisons to England and Jets fans as well being sort of wild. Here's one from C. Tawali. OBJ is Neymar. This is a comparison that uh, an, another trite one, but it makes sense. Generational talents divisive. I don't know if they're divisive. Who aren't in their prime anymore. Both burst on the scene Ooh. and show glimpses of brilliance. Still, OBJ got his ring. Can Neymar get his medal? I mean, Brazil very heavily favored in this tourney. And then what do you got here, Hammy? Italy equals the Steelers. Multiple championships, strong defense, Ooh. many all-time great players, storied history, but not winning a championship this year. I can't believe Italy didn't make it. Uh, Italy didn't make it, so Italy is kind I mean, Italy is kind of like the Rams, huh? Yeah, I, I, that's a good one, too. I, I, I think I like that even better than the Steelers. <laughs> my, my red carding? I mean, honestly, a team, Italy always in the mix. Don't even qualify for the world. That doesn't happen. That does not happen. So uh, kind of like the Rams having a historic 
Super Bowl hangover upset. Sean Payton said on the Fox set that it's one where you're in bed till the afternoon. What does Sean Payton know about staying in bed uh, till the afternoon after a hangover? I bet Mark Ingram has answers for me next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. That's went to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. Let's do it. Our next guest is someone we like to call a beacon of positivity. It was only a matter of time before the luck and fortune changed for the New Orleans Saints. You got to win, baby! We got the dub. <laughs> we got the dub. <laughs> now, if that's what's going to happen when you get a dub, I don't want any dubs for the New Orleans Saints. No. Con okay, 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 okay. Congratulations. Mark Ingram is here. Mark Ingram, a player, a prolific superstar in the NFL, and also part owner of the D.C. United Soccer Team. World Cup going on. No, you're watching. We're going to get into all of it. But a, a huge win against the Super Bowl defending champs. When we spoke last week, you said every game is must win. You had a playoff mindset. You got one and live enough. Other day, but something's missing, and we've talked about how you needed to celebrate your next victory. And so, take a look at this really quick. Just what it's supposed to be like after a win, you know what I mean? Yeah. This, this is what you, do this it is for. What you this wanted is for Andy Dalton last night. Yes, I, I had a few chains I wanted to put on them. Everybody, Marshawn got a few chains, AK got a chain, everybody giving chains. Now, now your QB just iced out. And he vibing, you know what I mean? That's, that's what you want. That's, that's what, what it's I all need, about. I need Andy Dalton in that. It would make me much more happy than Kirk Cousins. So what, you didn't give him your chains? I couldn't find the photo. It was a home victory. You know, that was on the plane. So, you know, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't get him the chains. But, you know, we have a, a trip to San Fran this weekend. Ooh. So, you know, we go out there on the road. You know what I mean? Get a, a victory against a good team. Yeah. Maybe we got the chains on the way back from my boy. I've Andy. seen y'all have a $500,000 glass thing of cash rolled into that locker room. I've seen disco lights. I've seen smoke machines. I've seen a Super Bowl winning visor wearing head coach named Sean Payton dancing with a broom in there. It turns into, uh, I don't even know what club is cool in LA anymore, so I'm not going to say One Oak or something stupid. But you couldn't, you couldn't give him your chains in that locker room? It just didn't happen that way. It just didn't happen that way. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It felt I'm, I'm ashamed. Yeah. I'm ashamed that I let you down. I'm ashamed that I let you down. I'm ashamed that I let the show down. I, I'll accept my red card. Okay, well, we did. We we found, we made a photo because we couldn't find one. That's not a bad look. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That could have been him. We, 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 we're a little bit more icy. Our diamonds is a little bit higher <laughs> quality. You know what I mean? We're a little bit more icy. The diamonds is a little higher quality. So we appreciate the picture. But uh, we're going to make sure we bring it to reality for you. For San Francisco this week, we love to see it. Now, he played well. Dalton really did. 260 yards, three touchdowns. What do you think clicked for this offense that wasn't working the previous two weeks? I think we were getting the ball to our playmakers. Um, you know, Olave, he got in, got involved. Jarvis, he got in, got involved. Taysom, AK. Um, you know, we protected the quarterback. Got to be able to protect the quarterback if he's only throwing four incompletions. Mm. So, uh, I think just... It was a well-rounded, you know, second half for us. I think we were a little slow in the first half, but I think we, you know, kind of hit our stride, got into a rhythm, got into a flow in the second half, had some big plays, and was able to score in the red zone. That's always that's always huge. That's always key. And um, we got to keep it going. You and I have talked about Olave. Even before the season, you were excited about him, and he's having a terrific rookie year. Is there a wide receiver that he reminds you of? I Man, he's so smooth. He's fast. Got good hands. Super competitive. Young. Let's see, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. But CO2, that's what we call him, CO2. Okay. CO2. And, uh, I love that. CO2, that's what we call him. He, I just feel like he's going to be one of those guys. I don't necessarily have a comparison to him right what now. What kind of guy? What, what does that mean? He's going to be one of the guys, man. He's going to be one of them household names, one of them guys that you could draft on your fantasy team and, uh, you know, know that he's going to give you production every single year. You know, um, he's, he just got to stay healthy because he has the mindset, he has the attitude, he has the ability, he has the skills. And um, uh, he's one of those guys, man. And I yeah. knew it from the first time I saw him out here practicing, out here making plays. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's going to be one of these guys that has a long, um, you know, a long career, a productive career. And it's just because he has the attitude, he has the skill set, he has the mindset. Did and, you, um, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Did, you were with 
Michael Thomas, his rookie year with the of Saints. Course. Did you have the same sort of feelings? Yep. He was one of those guys. You could see it. You know what I mean? Just how they compete, um, the attention to detail, the the want and the desire to be great. You know, those are those are tools and things that you see that everyone unfortunately doesn't have. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the league. So um I definitely had that I de- you could definitely feel that with Mike. Yeah. You could definitely feel that with Chris too. Does Mike help Chris? Yeah, I mean they're both Ohio State Buckeyes, all the Buckeyes. Yeah. We're the New Orleans, we're the New Orleans Buckeyes, you know, hella, hella Buckeyes all over. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're all close, they all tight. I'm sure Mike, you know, put gives uh, you know, Chris some good tips and uh, for, from that for how success, how success early. Yeah. You know, as a young wide receiver, so I'm sure Mike helps him out. That's amazing. Now I know another week, another day that I ask you about Jameis, and you tell me that you don't know anything about him, but I will say he did. <laughs> I know. I know you're not going to tell me anything, but he did come out and speak. I don't know if you saw this about, uh, you know, not being a starter. He obviously, and we respect that, wants to go out there. He wants the job. And he said, quote, that it hurts his soul, uh, you know, and and as a leader, as you are in that locker room and probably the most positive NFL player I know, what are the conversations like with Jameis? What's going on there? I mean, obviously that's something that, you don't foresee or something that you're obviously don't want to happen mm-hmm. is be, uh, you know, injured. And for that situation, you know, that's tough. And, uh, but, you know, he said that, but he's just been positive. Um, he's been working. He hasn't been pouting. He hasn't been walking around with his head down. He hasn't been, um, you know, feeling sorry for himself and walking around, you know, giving off that energy. So um, I think I respect him a lot, you know, just because of how he's handling the situation. He's going out there, he's preparing each and every sun, each and every day for Sunday like he's a starter. Um, he's out there working his butt off, he's making the throws, he's working out, he's watching the film, he's preparing mentally, physically, and emotionally like he's going to be the guy. So, um, you know, you just have to respect that mindset, you have to respect Absolutely. the attitude. And, uh, you know, he's not bringing a cancerous attitude or a negative attitude to the team. So, uh, you know, as a teammate, as my brother, as my good friend, you know, mm-hmm. just trying to keep him positive, trying to keep him motivated. And uh, I'm just super happy and respectful that he has been going about it the way he has. He, I mean, he's not going to be negative, not on your watch, not in that locker room with Mark Ingram. <laughs> oh, no. All right, we're going to talk a little World Cup and have some fun. But yesterday uh, I was getting ready um, to watch the, the World Cup game, which you, of course, were watching as well and were tweeting about and excited for the U.S. Uh, and I noticed that you sent out this tweet, and I've seen it around the league, among some of the, the most respected NFL players, saying, watch this World Cup and see if any of these matches are on played are played on artificial surfaces. They're not. The NFL needs to do better by our players. Why is this Why is this happening now? Like, why are the players in the NFLPA getting together at this moment, and why did you feel compelled to send that? Man, I, <clears throat> obviously, you know, it's difficult. You know, some are dome stadiums, some are um, whatever it may be. But I just think, you know, we're the best players. We're the best football players in the world. And you see these, um, you know, we're the best American football players in the world. I guess the best football players in the mm-hmm. world are now participating in the World Cup, and they all play on natural grass every single play, every single every single match. Like, when we went to <clears throat> London, mm-hmm. Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium had natural, a beautiful natural grass pitch, right? Okay. And they literally ripped up the pitch and installed artificial turf for us to play on. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. It was crazy. But um, I think just the injuries, um, the recovery, uh, just spending a lot of time on turf and then spending time on grass as well, I feel like I recovered quicker you know, when I play on a natural surface, I do on the artificial surface. Um, the artificial surface is kind of just achy, yeah. you know, like your bones, your joints. Like, you know what I mean? It's just it doesn't have the same bounce, like the same give like a natural surface does. So you also see a lot of people getting their knees kind of like caught, their ankles kind of caught, their feet kind of caught. And um, this is causing a lot of injuries. And um, I think, you know, we're just trying to bring attention to the matter that um, natural surface is a preference. Natural surface is better for players' right. health in the long term, and, um, you know, we should be treated as such, you know. Yeah. Uh, the- I, I got to tell you, I, like, I, uh, I want to know more about it. I'm not as educated as I need as I need to be, but I can tell that it's gaining yeah. steam. It's curious, too, that it's gaining yeah. steam right now when and we're then, seeing. Yeah. And then there's levels of the turf. So there's, okay. like, seven teams that have, like, the worst graded, you slit know, turf. Slit film turf. Yeah, yeah slit film turf. Yep. So, 
Even if you do have to have turf, I think we should have the highest graded turf and not okay. the worst graded turf. Well, so, let me tell you this. No Six stadiums have the turf that you're talking about. Yeah. You're, you're one of them. Saints, yes, I know. 100%. Jets, Lions. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Jets, Giants share the stadium. Vikings, yeah. Colts, Bengals. So what... Is this a, 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 is there a, what is the access to Mrs. Benson? Like, is this something that you feel that strongly about that you could go talk to her about or talk to? Because like, if the Saints and it's hard to you know like you're saying it's a dome, you can't have grass. We get it. Everyone wants grass. I loved hearing. I right. learned so much listening to Travis and Jason Kelsey on their podcast. They're talking about what it's like to feel like you're getting your skin ripped off if you're on this kind of turf or whatever it is. Like, how 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 comfortable are you to maybe go to Mrs. Benson and have a chat? I'm super comfortable. Miss Benson is an amazing owner. She's just so kind. She's nice. She's always around. She's always uh, just spreading love and positivity. Mm -hmm. And genuine. she's just such a sweet woman. And she's uh, we're we're blessed to have her as an owner. So um, I I'm actually very comfortable going to talking to Miss Benson about you know about this situation about um, the problem that it is with with, with, with turf with artificial turf. Um, She's great. She's awesome. And she gives us all the resources that we need to be successful. So um, I am actually confident going to <clears throat> I am actually confident going to talk to her about it. I love it. I think that it'd be so cool to have the Saints be. And it's, I mean, you're, you, and it's it's cool to see so many. I love when the players come together and and work on something for the improvement of the game yeah. and improvement of everybody. So uh, thank you it's, for doing uh, that. It has, it has a bigger impact. It has yeah. more emphasis when it's coming from the group. You know, it's, it's coming from everyone, you know, as opposed to just one person. It's so true, and I will not give a yellow or red card to that. But that's what we do here with Mark Ingram. Uh, and it's Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the whole adorable Ingram family. You're so great. But here we go. We're going to show you some footage. Yellow card for a kind of serious infraction. The red card gets you booted. Let's look at this. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. This is crazy. USC, UCLA game. Big Ooh. rivalry. I mean, come on. Ooh. Let's replay. I mean, he this is insane. Him. What happened here? He pleaded him. Ah. Mm. I mm. mean, at the beginning, Where? the fan is smiling, and then not so much. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a red card. That's a red card, man. For who? Like, listen, like, like for the for, it's a yellow for the fan. I mean, like, hey, these people that are going on the field, and they, you better be aware. You better have your. <laughs> You better be aware. I mean, we seen Wagner and Wagner. one of his teammates. They 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 killed a dude. And then now we seeing this security guard decleating somebody. Hey man, the people not playing, you go on the field, man. Red card. Red card. Red card, but you gotta know Bobby Wagner could creep up behind anything and come get you if you go out on the field. And, yes, Bobby Wagner and it was another teammate. They both got him. I'm like, what did they have on their mind? Like, yo. I, I, I dare somebody to streak during the game while I'm on the field. I, I dare was, somebody. Like, I, but if, if, I, if I had to pick out of any player, Bobby Wagner would be the last player that I think would go do that. <laughs> Me too. Like, the <laughs> last thing on my mind is, like, if somebody's on this field, like, I'm going to go hit them and tackle them. I'm not doing that. I'm going to let them do their thing. Like, somebody else got to handle it, right? Like, he was like, no, not on my watch. It's Pop. true. Pop! Okay, the biggest story heading into week 11 was the weather. Everyone wants to talk about the weather in Buffalo. So here's wide receiver Gabe Davis uh, and his dog, and he throws his dog into the snow. I don't like this. What do you? What are we giving red him? Red card, red card, man, red card. You can't do that to the pup. Hey, That's like my throwing pup, Darren can't even see the pup. Look, look, look at the pup, man. He like just innocent bystander. I just want to use the bathroom. You throwing me in the, in, in, in the snow pile. Like, come on, man. Red card. It's not okay. Come All right, on, we're going to get through as many of these as possible. Cowboys Micah Parsons, he comes in style uh, to the game in Minnesota. Do we have this one to play the Vikings? He chose this color. Your thoughts? Hey, man. Let the man drip. How you going to drip? You feel me? Like <laughs> he, can, he can wear purple. Is that okay? I guess, hey, if he going to wear purple and he going to give out the performance that he did. That's true. I guess we all need to be wearing opponent's colors going into the game. I hear you. I hear you on that. <laughs> so right. I'm, I'm going to give him a yellow. I'm going to give him a yellow just for the mere fact that he went in there with their colors on and then dethroned them in their house, in their crib, handle business. So he gets Big yellow. trust. You're so funny. Okay, Texans yeah. running back day. Oh, here we go. We love giving you a running back. This is Damian Pierce. Uh, a quick inside screen pass, okay? Little did he know he was about to enter the WWE. Oh, my goodness. The suplex. Y'all, red card, man. Get off my boy like that, man. Get off my boy. 
suplex him? Running backs, hey, this is running backs on running backs, man. I'm looking out for my boy, man. Get off my boy, man. That's a red card. You can't suplex my dog. You That's a penalty. Su- Unnecessary roughness. You could have just tackled him, man. You ain't had to. <clears throat> okay, last time you were on the show, we introduced you to producer Conrad, who just got one of the worst haircuts. What you do to my man Conrad? That I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, this is the bad haircut. I did not do this. I took care of it. I'm the savior. You gave the initial haircut a red card, and here I'm. I took care of it, and uh, and this is what it looked like. I think we have a. Do we have the end of it? Oh my goodness, Kay. What you do to my man what Conrad? What do you mean? I was on the ones and twos. Oh my goodness. You ain't That's even okay. going. You going. You going against the grain, like. He looks like he looks like Ryan Lochte. Oh my goodness, Kay. I'm giving you a red card. Really? What you did to my Conrad? Where's the finished product at? He's, he looks good. Like, I don't know if we have the finished product, but he actually looked. He took. He cleaned it up for himself because yeah. I wasn't gonna. You did my man. Hey man. You, hey man. You can't do my man Conrad like that. We a red card for bullying, man. We standing up to bully. A red card for bullying. We're standing up to. I, I didn't suplex him. I get the same kind of treatment as. Come on, the <laughs> defender. Come on now. Uh, I wanted to say, have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Very the thankful. The haircut is delicate, Kay. You can't just mess with the okay. haircut. Okay, you know? it grows back. Calm down. Uh, you're amazing. We appreciate you. Go Baby. win. Go win at San Francisco. Put those chains. Get the good ones out. Shine them up. Get them on Andy Dalton's neck and send us a picture. Yep. Love you, Kay. Love, Love you. the show. Bye. Appreciate Thank you. We'll Happy be back Thanksgiving. after this. Green, I don't know how much. Green, potatoes, tomatoes, crab, lamb, hog. You name it. FanDuel Casino giving thanks to the loyal customers by hosting a refer a friends giving event. It is happening right now, as is Poland and Mexico and David Beckham and Peyton Manning in this Frito Lay commercial. But here's how it works today through Saturday. Any FanDuel Casino player can refer their friend by sending them a referral link. And after your friend wagers $10 or more on FanDuel Casino, you'll both get $50 bonus and one shared entry to the refer a friends giving sweepstakes for a chance. Uh, to share $50,000. Wow, 10 sets of winners will receive a $5,000 bonus. More to come right here on Up and Adams. All right, Dave is saying you'd be proud of meeting homemade pierogi while watching Up and Adams. So that makes me so happy. Send me a picture. It didn't happen. Um, I don't know what's happening. And Saudi Arabia beat Argentina. All we need is Lewandowski to score a goal. And then France take care of business. Mbappe be Mbappe and we'll win the parlay. Let me tell you.